What is happening, my brothers and sisters? Another episode, The Digital Disciple, Brian Cody, coming at you, Backyard Blessings. Boom, let's get right into it. Because the Lord has been pressing upon my spirit this entire week, this thought right here. And this one goes out, by the way, this, this, this one's for the hardcore Christians, the ones who are like, man, I'm sold out for the Lord. The ones who is, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This, this one's directly for you guys. And here's what the Lord wants to know. Where are the voices of my people standing up for me? Because look, let's just be honest. Let's be real. All the things that you and I don't like that are going on in the world right now, all of it. It's not just a direct attack on us as Christians. It's a direct attack on Jesus, on his word, and on his, his ways. The system that he set in place is under attack. And where are the voices of my people? See, the world, unfortunately, has trained us. Shh, if you're a Christian, no, you don't get to express your opinion. Other people can yell and scream and get in your face and point their finger. But as soon as you go back at them, oh, see, that's how those Christians are now. Here's what I'm not abdicating. I'm not saying go on social media and get in an argument with someone you don't know about what's going on in the world right now. What I am saying is talk to the people on your street, at your work, at your school, maybe even at your church, right? And have a conversation with them, not an argument, a conversation. And what do you mean? What are you talking about? What, what things? What attacks? Well, let's let's think about it. Let's 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 really look into this. What's the most the biggest thing right now that everyone's talking about? Abortion. Abortion is murder. It's killing that directly goes against the fifth commandment of the Lord. Thou shalt not kill. As a matter of fact, it says direct and intentional killing. Which is what abortion is, is gravely sinful. How about the attack on the system of marriage? Oh, yeah, men can marry men, women can marry... No, that's not the way that God made it. In Genesis 2.24, the Lord tells us a man shall leave his family, mother and father and cleave to his wife. A marriage is between a man and his wife, a man and a woman. So there's another attack. How about the fact that there's no such thing as gender? Genesis 1, 27, in his image, he created them. Man and woman, he created them. See, in order to defend the word, you do have to know the word. And I know some of the tendencies of people that don't want to get in an argument isn't just the fact that they're afraid of the argument rather than just having a conversation. You can do it respectfully. Don't allow yourself to be drawn into it. If you, it's screaming and yelling. That's not what I'm talking about. We're intelligent. Know your word. If you don't know your word, get in it. Especially if you claim to be Christ's children. I walk with the Lord every day. Okay. Then prove it. Know your Lord. He wants us to know him. So be able to defend him. Think about this. Here's what it says in 1 Peter 3.15. It says, in your hearts... Honor Christ the Lord. Oh, how do I honor Christ the Lord in my heart? I'm going to tell you how. You honor the Christ Lord as holy by doing this. Always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet, do it with gentleness and respect. That's what I'm talking about. See, don't be muzzled by fear. Be strengthened by faith. Don't be afraid to get into a conversation. Look, I'm not saying God needs us to defend him. My son is eight years old. I don't need him to defend me. But if people are attacking his father by their actions or their words, and I'm not there, I'm hoping he's going to step in and go, hey, uh, you guys are wrong about what you're saying about my father. And that's what I'm talking about. See, Jesus does it for us. Does. Notice I said does. He's still doing it. He did it and he will do it. So what's our excuse not to stand up for him? Do you really believe in it? In um, Acts 9 verse 4, when Saul at the time, before he became Paul, was persecuting Christians, 
arresting them, beating them, and in some cases having them put to death, persecuting Christians. Acts 9 verse 4 says this, Saul, Saul, this is Jesus talking, and notice he repeats his name twice because in the Bible if something gets repeated twice that means pay attention to what I'm getting ready to say. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? You see that? Did you hear it? Christians were being persecuted and Jesus knocked Paul off his high horse and said, why are you persecuting me? So when Christians are being persecuted, so is Jesus. When Jesus is being persecuted, so are Christians. You ready? Are you ready to stand for the Lord? I am. Look, if we don't start standing, the places that we have left to stand in are going to get smaller and smaller. And at some point, the next thing they will come for, because they see how passive the Christians are, they'll start shutting down churches. There are demonic forces in control of this country. And some of y'all are going to hear that and go, well, he's gone off the deep end. Okay. And that's what you believe. But I'm telling you right now, there are dark spirits controlling this country at this very moment. And what they want to attack more than anything, as I've just proven, is the word of God, the system of God, and next, the people of God. So you want to stand now? I do. Once again, I'm not talking about, let's go, buddy. As a matter of fact, our actions will prove to these people who have 99% of these people who attack God's word and what they don't even know God's word. They have no idea. And guess what else they don't know? They don't know their own words. They don't have a reason to defend why they believe in what they believe in. And the reason they get mad at you when you try to have a conversation with them is because what you're really doing is ex exposing their lack of knowledge. So show them the knowledge you have. Show them the gentleness that you have and the respect that you have, not just for your God, but also for them. Have a conversation. Sit down. Stop being silent. Stand up for the God who has always stood up for you. See how easy that was? In the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you all. All. Amen.